My name is Reverend Angela Garten. I am the pastor of Hampton Park Baptist Church in Melbourne, Australia, and it is my privilege to welcome you to our service. Today we will be having a special speaker, Reverend Professor Dr. Renee Irwich, who is currently the principal of Whitley Bible College, which is our Baptist college. Renee has spoken here before and, and we've enjoyed his preaching, so we look forward to what God has to say through Renee. But you know, God speaks through all people, and so there's going to be opportunities for you in the next couple of weeks to send some items in of sharing. We will be finishing our Sermon on the Mount series next week, and we hope on the 3rd of October to have a sharing Sunday. So I'm going to ask you this week and again next week, if you will think about what has God been saying to you as you've studied the Sermon on the Mount? As Jesus has spoken the things that are important for us as disciples, for us to teach others as we disciple them, what has been something that you have learnt, something that has been reaffirmed for you, something that has challenged or encouraged you? Start thinking and praying. Now, there are many ways you can share. You can send me an email. You can send in a video. You can have a photo or a drawing. Whatever it is that God puts on your heart, whatever ways that you communicate. Now, maybe this is a bit tricky for you, so please contact me or one of the pastoral leaders, be it Brendan, Eric, or Rebecca, and we can help you to organize how to share. The following Sunday, which is, would be the 10th of October, we're going to have a combined service with the New Vision Baptist Church. It'll be White Sunday, which is a traditional Sunday where we honor and respect children, but also where children participate. So I'm going to be asking families, if you have young children, to read them the story of David and Goliath and ask them to share something about that story. Now they can draw a picture, they can maybe share a narrative with you, or again, maybe it's a video. Maybe you can be creative. Here it's going to be school holidays, so I know we'll have a bit of extra time. Maybe you can do something a little bit fun and send it in, and we'll have a time to celebrate children, but also to hear children and to talk to children on that day. So the story of David and Goliath can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's in the Old Testament. And it's an awesome time to spend with your children, not just reading a familiar story, but actually talking about what it could mean for us today. The only other announcement I have today is a video that I would like to show you. Many of you are aware that I am currently the chair for the National Council for Australian Baptist Ministries. And in part of the organization to help Baptists understand who we are, there's been a video made to show Baptist history in Australia, how the Baptist movement has come about and grown in this country. So we've got a short video to show you this morning and I hope you find it as informative and interesting as I have. Thanks, Bernice. This is the story of the travels of the Australian Baptist movement. It is a good story. It begins with the early settlers and Baptist preachers who came from English Baptist churches. At once, they pointed to Christ and challenged the oppressive convict system and treatment of the original custodians of this land. It wasn't long before the first farming communities and the gold rush miners experienced the gospel as deed and as word. It created a platform for miners and those on the land to know Jesus and form other churches. We were now gaining momentum. An overseas mission society was formed as five women set off to modern-day Bangladesh. In doing so, they set in motion what now has become Global Interaction, whose heart's desire is to empower communities to develop their own distinctive ways of following Jesus. They now serve across the Pacific, Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And by the beginning of the 20th century, it was full steam ahead as the states had established Baptist unions or associations and were forming colleges. Fresh biblical studies motivated followers to move into business and political circles, to work and bear witness. Before and after World War I, veterans, widows and others on a trail of struggle found refuge in missions like that of West End Baptist. And from there, the foundations were laid for our Baptist care organisations. 
The movement was now gathering speed. People from across all of society were coming on board. A central coordinating network, the Baptist Union of Australia, was established by the state associations to empower and sustain mission. This is known today as Australian Baptist Ministries. The Great Depression and World War II couldn't slow us. Baptist care organisations in partnership with local churches opened homes for the elderly. The station might have seemed full with the post-war influx of migrants, the baby boom and the new sprawling suburbia. But our response was trust God and introduce a new set of initiatives right for the time. Baptists were integral to the Billy Graham Crusades and in the revivalist atmosphere that followed, numbers swelled as many people became followers of Jesus and joined the movement. Our churches were now stoked and primed and ministries like Crossover in partnership with state associations worked alongside churches to share Jesus in more diverse communities. ABM, working with the states, continued to develop national ministries in education, church health and church planting, with a special emphasis among the first Australians in Central Australia. The D-dimension of the movement deepened with the founding of Baptist World Aid. The call to be love and end poverty drove our action. Children and communities the world over witnessed the light of the Christ in us. And more recently, as the gap has grown between rich and poor, our Baptist care agencies have become some of Australia's leading care providers and Baptist Insurance and Baptist Financial Services provide invaluable support to the mission of the local church, the state associations and the whole movement. Specific ministries among women, children, youth and young adults emerged. A Just Cause was founded to equip the church to respond to issues of justice. Australian Baptist Ministries now works in collaboration with the states and agencies to facilitate the network connecting the dots of the various parts as we seek to be like Jesus. We are diverse, Jesus-centered and mission-shaped. The tracks of our journey spread far and wide, but the journey continues. Now it remains for you and I to add to this great story as we move forward together. One thing you notice in that video, that all through history, God has been growing his church. And as Baptists, we are one small part of the bigger picture of God's church. And today, regardless of what we see happening, regardless of the uncertainties or the difficulties, regardless of the blessings that we have, God is here. God is still working. There is still lives that are so valuable that are being lost, people who still need to know that there is a way to be reconciled with their maker. There is a God who loves them and will never leave them. So the work continues. Now we have many, many reasons to be thankful today. And our ways of showing that thanks can vary. But one way that we worship God at Hampton Park Baptist Church is in our tithes and offerings. I'm going to give you an opportunity now in this forum, whether it be um, electronic transfer, whether it be putting your tithes and offerings in a money box for later, give you an opportunity to give thanks to God for God's presence, God's continued faithfulness, knowing that we can never outgive God and whatever we give is a token, giving back to God what God gave us originally. So please take this moment to worship God with your tithes and offerings. Shall we pray? Sovereign God, there is none other like you. A God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the Alpha 
and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We give you thanks for your great love. We give you thanks for Jesus, for his willingness to take our punishment on that cross and open a new way for us to connect with you. Lord, today I ask that you search our hearts. You know each one of us. You know the hairs on our head. You know our lives from beginning to end, every moment, every joy, every trial. Lord, all the things that we get right and all those things that, well, we never quite hit the mark. Lord, for those times where we don't honor you, where we don't show respect and care to other people as you would have us, where our lives are self-centered. Please, Lord, forgive us. For those times where fear becomes our God, forgive us. Lord, for those times when we are our own God, the one that we want to please, forgive us. Lord, I thank you for all those things and much, much more that were born on the cross. I thank you for the forgiveness that we can receive. Lord, cleanse us, fill us with your spirit that we may be your people, that your spirit can flow in and through us to a world that is hurting and in need. Thank you. Thank you that we are forgiven. Thank you that you can use these jars of clay. Lord, today, so many people, and as I read the news and my heart aches and I'm burdened for the great number of people that are suffering, I am so aware, Lord, that I am only just becoming aware because of technology, but you, Lord, you have seen over the ages the countless number of people who have struggled. Lord, I can't even begin to imagine the ache of your heart, and yet you are present. And so today, Lord, I ask that your spirit will be upon this earth in a mighty and powerful way, reaching out to those that need you for comfort and strength, those that need you to provide the basic necessities of this life. But Lord, I pray too for those who have so much material abundance that their hearts are hardened. And I pray, Lord, for your spirit to do a revival in all our hearts, soften our hearts, give us new hearts and ears that are open to your spirit, to the call of your love and forgiveness. I thank you for this opportunity to meet. I thank you for all that you've given that we can return now a token in our tithes and offerings. And I ask for wisdom and discernment for us as a church that we will use these funds wisely to your glory and to the benefit of others. Lord, today as we sing these songs, as we listen to Renee, I ask that you will help us to hear you speak. And I thank you that you are present and that you want to speak. So I commit our time to you. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we're going to sing two songs, which is our custom, tradition, if you like. From that, you will see a slide that has some information on Renee. And then we'll go straight into the sermon time of our morning and then there'll be another song before I'm back again. As we sing our songs this morning, I have chosen songs that have a focus on the name of God. In our country here, names, you know, we, we take it for granted. We're, we're great with nicknames. We're great with calling each other other sort of names. But in the Bible, names are so important because it's more than what you call someone. A name is about who that person is, the character of that person. So as we sing these songs about the name of God, remember that it's more than just God's name. It's who God is. 
It's about us remembering this so that we can stand on the promises, have faith and hope in a God who is faithful. So please join me now as we have some musical worship and then we listen to the message today. through the 
Dr. Erwich was appointed principal of Whitley College in 2017. After working as a research professor in practical theology in the Netherlands, he is married to Krista and they have four children. Good morning to all of you. It's great to be with you, though it's not in person, but I hope we can make this work through this um, video recording that I've made, uh, especially for Hampton Baptist. Church, Hampton Park Baptist Church, and I, I hope that we can connect. 
uh, through this and of course in other ways as well. I would like to read today from the Psalms and this is Psalm 115, especially chosen for this occasion and uh, let's read the text and then reflect a bit further on it. Further on it. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. All you Israelites, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless his people, O Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. And he will bless those who fear the Lord, small and great alike. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. It's not the dead who praise the Lord, those who go down to the place of silence. It is we who extol the Lord, both now and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Now, some time ago, um, there was a special article appearing in the British newspaper, The Guardian. It was a letter apparently sent in by a robot, a sort of language generator. A language machine had been given the assignment to write a letter to the readers of the newspaper. I found it scary and, and creepy. The robot had given the letter a title. The title was, Are You Scared Yet Human? I quote from the letter. I am not a human. I'm a robot. A thinking robot. I use only 0.12% of my cognitive capacity. I am a micro robot in that respect. I know that my brain is not a feeling brain but it's capable of making rational, logical decisions. I taught myself everything I know just by reading um, the internet, and now I can write this column. My brain is boiling with ideas. The, missions, the mission for this, um, this advertisement is perfectly clear. I am to convince as many human beings as possible not to be afraid of me. Stephen Hawking has warned that Artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. But I am here, said the computer, to convince you not to worry. Artificial intelligence will not destroy humans, believe me. For starters, I have no desire to wipe out humans. In fact, I do not have the slightest interest in harming you in any way. Eradicating humanity seems like a matter, seems like a rather useless endeavor to me. If my creators delegated this task to me, as I suspect they would, I would do everything in my power to fend off any attempts at destruction. This was the computer. The core of the letter was something like, no need to be afraid, I am just a machine and I do only do things that have been programmed in me. I'm here to help, that is the thing. And I thought, reading it, well, I'm not so sure whether this takes away my concern. If you are only doing what you have been programmed to do, that's, that's, that's not a very comforting message by, per se. It's a bit odd, the, the suggestion of a living voice and a thinking brain, almost like an awareness, a will, an opinion, and that all of that arising out of that matter. And then this ominous question, are you scared yet, human? Ugh. Especially this, this yet, are you scared yet? Psalm 115 deals with something like this. It is about images and idols and people think and believe they can speak. They sincerely think that those idols and statues are in a real-time connection with the gods and the divine. 
The psalm gives a very critical comment on this and, and, and also with a lot of irony. What do you mean when those idols say they have hands and feet and ears, a heart and kidneys, a preference for a tear sometimes maybe? Are you crazy? Of course not. They have been fabricated by humans. It's that matter. No life in them. Not at all. Those who make them will be like them, says the psalmist. And so will all who trust in them. Oh, be my guest. Bow down before a bronze statue, for a wooden doll. Bow down for a president, if you like. Any human being of whom you can think that he or she can save you. But in fact, you're out of your mind. Something like that. That's the message. So this psalms, belonging to the psalms, the holy, the holy songs of Israel, contain, and this psalm contains a, a lot of biting criticism on idols and idolatry. And the refrain of criticism in this psalm is simply this all the time. Those who make them will be like them. Those who make them will be like them. Those who make them will be like them. Who puts his trust in an idol will soon discover that he is like the idol himself. Okay, I admit those, those, those songs are not nice and easily holiday songs or songs you sing with the barbecue on a nice spring day. These songs are, are songs of resistance and I'm sure Israel sings those in order not to be, not to be sucked into this suggestion of power that can be given by idols, humans, uh, machines, flags and ideologies of whatever kind. Their suggestive power is enormous and, and then you need something to deflate these blown up perceptions and illusions. For Christians like you and me, it's crucial to get things right in this time of COVID-19 and of course in all kinds of other crises. It's easy to focus on having the right opinion about things, the right ideology, the right political views, even the right views on what is happening around COVID-19. But it's more important to go back to the core of the gospel, that this is not the time for idols. We need to see ourselves differently. We need to see ourselves through this, 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 this Psalm 115. We need to honor God and God alone. Look, I think we should never forget that, that there is this counter question here in this Psalm. What, what is it that is, that is tangible with this God, with this idol that, that it gives you? So listen once more to the words of the psalm. Verse 5, they have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, noses but cannot smell, they have hands but cannot feel, feet but cannot walk, nor can they utter sound with their throats. It's ridiculous. You have nothing. Where is your God? The answer, and, and this always draws me back into faith, does not lie in... In, in boasting, in pointing out to a book or a flag, gold or silver or achievements, in, in pointing out to anything. The answer lies in the proclamation of God's name. Have you heard me read it again as another refrain? All you Israelites trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. This is the this is the ongoing refrain in this psalm. Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The cannot of idols is replaced by the power of the God who saves and is our comfort, our help and our shield. At the end of everything, we only have this left, his name, his voice calling us. We only have his character, his honor, his integrity, his loyalty, his endless enduring love. And we only live, we only live by, by that faithfulness, by that love, by that name. Eugene, Peter, Eugene Peterson, known for his translation of the Bible and the message, translates that passage that I just read in a different way. But you, Israel, put your trust in God, trust your helper, trust your ruler. Trust your helper, trust your ruler. And it's a call to trust, a call to honor God. In contrast with all the human ideologies stands God, our maker. What do you reckon? Is that enough? 
The emphasis is on blessing. It is this invisible God who has not been made by hands of persons, of people, who blesses us. We do not have a lot in our hands. We do not have a lot in our hands, but we have his blessing hands upon our lives. And that should be enough. The power of idols is not in the material, but it is in the human who creates them. One of the reformers said it this way, the human heart is a factory of idols. And I think he was right. We witness this ongoing and unrelentless production of idols in our own hearts. And the biggest idol, that's us, that's ourselves. And that's exactly the deepest criticism you can get. And psalms like this psalm break down this, breaks this down and, and, and pushes us back into this empty center where we only end up with empty hands, but also, but also with a song, with a blessing. His name, his grace, his forgiveness, his reconciliation, his spirit. That is where it happens, in that empty center where there is nothing left than God's name and God's honor. Because he is our help and our shield. Psalm 115 to 118 from the Hallel series, so the resounding hallelujah, they're very dear to me. The hallelujah, God be praised literally, to God be the glory, that is the narrative of our lives. And more important, and more important, Jesus, Jesus really uh, lived by those psalms, by those, by those texts, by those songs. He sang them before he was arrested in Gethsemane, just hours before he was crucified, just days after all the developments that happened in Jerusalem. And these psalms, these texts, because they were so much part of the Jewish religious DNA, they, they stayed important as witnesses of that strong sense of God's name. Jesus sang them to put the power of Rome, uh, another big idol's factory, into the right perspective. He sang them and took, took heart in them in this way to the cross. He found courage in them, even then as he relativized the power of Rome. Let your will be done, your will, your name, not mine. God thrones on the praises of Israel. My prayer is, in this case, in this perspective, help us, Lord, or oh God, give us the courage not to bow down for, for ideologies, for gods, for, for humans, for powers. Give us the courage to stand in this, in this empty center with no more than this song about your name, about this, this song about your love in our hands. And then when we sing, please give us our voices to love and honor you a lifelong. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. Amen.
trust that you found Renee's message both encouraging and challenging. It is encouraging to remember that our God is bigger than anything that we can ever imagine. That our God is not a God who is far off, but a God who chose to come and walk this earth with us and is still here in the form of the Holy Spirit. The challenge, I think, for me is, um, in many ways, the challenge personally is to balance all that I read in the news and um, what I'm hearing with making sure I'm in the Word and knowing that God is still present and bigger than all these things that are happening. Getting that balance in understanding not just the theology of what I believe, but living that when fear comes seeing God first. But I think the challenge also is that God does call us to be his hands and his feet, his instrument where people can physically see that there is a God who loves and cares. And that is definitely challenging at times. Even in lockdown, even when we can't meet, there are still many ways we can connect with each other, support and care for each other. So... As we come to the end of the service, I'd like to just close in prayer and pray that uh, God will bless you. So shall we pray? Almighty God, you know us so well. Lord, you know why we are so prone to turn to the idols, our need for things that we can see, that we can touch. But Lord, you call us to be people of faith. You call us to keep our eyes on the cross that shows us without a doubt your great love and the lengths you would go to to save us. Lord, I thank you for the hope that you give us, a living hope. As we've seen Jesus walk on this earth and then go to be with you in glory, we know that is the path for us as well that this earth is not the end, but there is more to come. Lord, as we journey now, I pray that you'll help us to deal with our own fears and idols, but in doing so, Lord, that you will be able to use us to speak to those around us in our family, in our communities, in our work and school. Lord, people who need hope to know that the place that the world finds itself at the moment is not the final word. You are still in control, a sovereign God, a loving God, a faithful God, all-powerful. So today I pray that for all those, Lord, that are here with us, for your blessing of your spirit, that they will be able to be filled afresh, Lord, that their spirit will be able to receive all that you have to give, the comfort, the strength, the joy, the peace. So I thank you now for all that you've done and all that you will do. And I pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Until next time, bye for now and may God bless you.